Today, I get to meet Dr. Susan Golden Meadow. Uh, she studies how gesture can change us and help us learn. I'm super excited about it. Fortunately, I'm also super late uh, due to some DC area traffic, which was compounded by the fact that I got in the car 10 minutes late. So, I'm hoping that she's still gonna be there waiting for me. Let's find out. Hello, so sorry I'm late. No problem. Thank you for waiting up for me. And uh, how did the lecture go? It went well. well thank good, you. good. Well, I'm, I'm so interested in your work because uh, it, it, it so uh, relates so much. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, it, it just relates so well to sort of some fundamental human behavior. Well, I'm gesturing right now. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we all do it. Um, and. Um, how, how did you how did you become interested in this? How did this become your field of specialty? So I actually became interested in gesture from another project that I was doing. Mm -hmm. I, in my PhD dissertation, looked mm -hmm. at how children create language, create mm -hmm. a gestural language. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at children who were not exposed to any usable linguistic input. Mm -hmm. These are deaf children of hearing parents. Mm -hmm. They're so deaf they can't acquire speech. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were not being taught sign language. And what I was interested in looking at is whether they could come up with any aspects of language. <laughs> so what I studied, started to look at, was just how they would fashion language with their hands. Really? So well, and, and you get into that in your research, that, that this is sort of a universal human trait. Um, blind people gesture, deaf people gesture, right? It's a little different, okay. though. I think in blind people, mm -hmm. what we're looking at is the gestures that naturally co-occur with speech. Mm -hmm. But in the deaf people that I was looking at, they had no speech, they had no language. They mm -hmm. were not being con um, trained in any way mm -hmm. in a linguistic system mm -hmm. or even exposed in any way to a linguistic system. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they invented this system, mm -hmm. children. And it's not a they, it's each deaf child in a, in a home of hearing people. Mm -hmm. So just started to use their hands to communicate. Mm -hmm. And those gestures to me look really different from the kinds of gestures that we all produce when we spontaneously talk. Hmm. Those gestures look much more like language. So I actually got into studying the gestures that we spontaneously produce when we talk as a control for hmm. those other gestures. Hmm. Because those, to me, are sort of serving the function of language, mm -hmm. a real linguistic system with all the structure of linguistic system. And the gestures that we produce when we talk are an adjunct to that system, but a really important part of it. Um. Well, you, you can actually see I, I'm trying to think hard and, and gesture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were saying that, you know, you kept saying we, we gesture, mm -hmm. it's how we communicate. Mm -hmm. Is this something uniquely human? Is this something that, mm -hmm. that makes us human? Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly it is uniquely human in the sense that nobody gestures like we do. Well, first of all, other species don't talk. Right. So a gesture is very, But very they tight. move. They do move. Mm -hmm. um, and there are species that gesture in certain ways. So, mm -hmm. you know, for example, Chip might hold out his little shoulder mm -hmm. because he wants it scratched. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a gesture. I mean, it's certainly indicating to you that I want a scratch over mm -hmm. here. But it's very tied to action. And it's not very representational. Hmm. Um, so I think where what we have as an advantage is that we use our gestures to convey information. So he's, he's giving you his shoulder saying, scratch me, but he's not pointing to it. He doesn't even point it, right. Mm. And whereas a, a human child would definitely point it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so one of the things that I find impressive about these deaf children that I study is that they're, they're called home signers because they invent their sign languages at home, is that they just use this to schmooze. <laughs> you know, they bother to say, oh, look, that's out there, and it's big, you know, <laughs> or something like that, whereas it, chimpanzees just don't do that. They don't find it worthy, newsworthy, right. to convey this information to another person. So we do that, and we'll do it with our hands if we can't use our mouths. So yeah. when the, the chimp doesn't compliment the cantaloupe I gave him, it's, it's, <laughs> he just can't do it. It's not that he's being rude. Right. Yeah. Hello. Is everything okay? Can I get you anything? Yeah. yeah no, this I, is great. I think we're Thanks. great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 
I mean, the work to me is just so interesting, uh, and, and, and I can't wait to find out what you come up with next. Yeah. So, thank well, you. the part about, about it that I am excited okay. about right now mm -hmm. is the fact that gesture looks like it's so good for getting us to transfer knowledge mm -hmm. to a task, to a new problem. Five plus four plus three equals blank plus three are okay. the problems that we tend to look at. Mm -hmm. That's hard for a child mm -hmm. because there's this blank and then a plus three. Right. Okay. So we want children to be able to solve problems like that and to truly understand the relationship of mathematical equivalence, that there are two sides to the problem mm -hmm. and they need to be equal. Mm -hmm. We want them to get that idea. It turns out that if you use gesture in teaching them, they're better at getting that idea. Not just learning how to solve the problem, but better, better at getting that idea hmm. and retaining it better. So wait, let, let me, sh show me, show me show the you problem, problem you're talking okay. about. Yes. All right. Okay. So it's a very simple problem, but it's really hard for fourth and fifth graders in America. Or so, me. Or you. <laughs> I don't think this is hard. Four plus five, or five plus four plus three equals blank plus three. Okay. And it's hard for children because they never see this three on the other side. You know, so what they tend to think is that, oh, what I should do is I should add up all of these numbers and put that number in the blank. Okay, so you come up with, 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 come with, up with 12. 12. Mm -hmm. yeah, or I just add up all the numbers and put that in the blank. Okay. They just don't get the idea. I think they truly don't understand what the equal sign is. Huh. And that's an extremely important part for understanding that. So how would you gesture your way through this problem? Or how, how have you found that kids gesture their way through So the if a child is going to add up just the numbers on this side of the problem. They point at the five and the four and the three, and okay. then they'd put the number in the blank, or maybe they'd point at the five and the four and the three and the three and put the number in the blank. Mm -hmm. But if they know how to solve the problem, what they might do is do, I want to make one side equal to the other side. Hmm. Or teach us that how you, you can add the five and the four and the three, and then you can take away the other three and mm -hmm. come up with the answer. Well, is, that, is that that kind of sweeping gesture at the end? Is it's that a little takeaway gesture, huh. because that's an add subtract strategy. Huh. Well, uh, ooh. God, I actually just realized that I'm late for my next Okay, interview. terrific. So, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. This has been great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Hey, hey, who's paying for this coffee?